certainly the Lord is good and his grace is truly amazing. We thank God for another opportunity to uh, proclaim the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. I want to call your attention today to the 51st number of Psalm. Just to read a few verses beginning at verse 1. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Verses 1 and 2 of the 51st number of Psalm. The occasion of this particular Psalm is that David was approached by Nathan the prophet. Nathan the prophet went to him after he had gone in to Bathsheba, recorded in 2 Samuel chapters 11 and 12. Perhaps you read the story about David being out on the top of his house or his castle while Joab and his army was out fighting the war. David uh, noticed a beautiful woman bathing outside and he was looking down on her. He sent for her and of course uh, the scriptures tell us that he laid with her and later she informed him that she was with child. David uh, tried to put off the child on her husband Uriah the Hittite by sending for him and uh, allowing him to come home and trying to get him to go and sleep with his wife and of course even giving him alcohol to drink. But Uriah was loyal to uh, Joab and the troops and particularly David so he refused to sleep with his wife while he was home. So David being uh, in a mood of treachery, it appears then, twisted in a way in his sins, he ended up committing adultery, bearing false witness, murder, coveting his neighbor's wife. David sent a letter by Uriah. Uriah was so loyal to David until he didn't even know what was in the letter, but it was instructions for Joab to get uh, Uriah out front and to be killed rather than to deal with the situation of having his wife pregnant. A broken contrite spirit, in fact, that's the subject. A broken slash contrite spirit three main points we want to emphasize. The first one being sin confessed. Sin confessed. And point number two, forgiveness requested. Forgiveness requested. And three, plea for mercy. plea for mercy. David had spent approximately a year not repenting and going ahead and not dealing with his sins. Here is uh, an account of Nathan the prophet coming to him and 
and expressed how a rich man took a ewe lamb and killed it and served his guests rather than to uh, use his own, which he had much and had many. He used that of a poor man. David uh, pronounced that this man should not live that would do such a thing. But look at the expression, perhaps you can imagine, on David's face when Nathan the prophet said, you are the man. You are the man. David had to go into repentance. He has written the agony of a sin-stricken soul. It's a vivid example of a child of God out of fellowship with God. Therefore, in great need of God's mercy. Many, many people look at this particular psalm and they praise God for his forgiveness of David, but they overlook the fact there are consequences for our sins. David makes a plea for his, this mercy. He says, have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In other words, he's saying there is nothing that I have done that I deserve this. But I'm pleading to you because of your love and kindness. According to the multitude of your tender mercies. Our sins are in multiplicity. Our sins are many. Our sins are multitudes. But we serve a God that has mercy and multitude of tender mercies that if we plead to him in sincerity with a broken spirit and a contrite heart that he will forgive us. Can't you hear David crying out in sincerity, blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Adultery, murder, bearing false witness, with no self-justification, David makes this plea. David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord, a confession without excuse. Repentance has three elements, intellectual, emotional, and volitional. Intellectual means that we think about it. Emotion mean that we are somewhat sorry about it. Volitional, which is the last stage of repentance, means that we turn from our evil ways and turn to the Almighty God. David was now honest. He was broken. Therefore, David asked for mercy for his multitude of sins. He knew that he needed to be given God's multitude of tender mercies, which he knew that he did not deserve. God's mercies are greater than the multitudes of our sins. Oh, praise his holy name. David asked God to blot out his transgressions. In other words, literally wipe them away, which alludes to the coming Christ and his atoning work at Calvary. Wash me thoroughly denotes the greatness of guilt. His plea was for full cleansing, not just an outward cleansing, but from the very nature of the foul men. I can hear him saying in Psalm 119 and 29, remove from me the way of lying and grant me your law graciously Transgression equals crossing a boundary, while iniquity is twistedness or perversion. Sin speaks of falling short or missing the mark. David expressed the depth of his need. He said, behold, I was brought forth in iniquity. God wanted a transformation to the inward parts 
to the hidden parts that would enable David to exemplify wisdom and understanding. He says, purge me with hyssop. Hyssop was used to apply Passover lamb blood, Exodus chapter 12, verse 22. Prayer for restoration. Hyssop was also used by the priests in sprinkling the purifying water, Numbers chapter 19, verse 18. Purge me with hyssop. Spiritual and moral cleansing in connection with atonement. The blood sacrifice which points to Christ, the, high, the great high priest who died and went to a better sanctuary, creating a better covenant based on better promises. In other words, chapter 51 or Psalm number 51 rather, verses 10 through 11 says, Create in me a clean heart. O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. In other words, a steadfast spirit meant that one that continues in the way of godliness, one that, verse 12 to 13, restore to me the joy of my salvation. In other words, David was not saying that he was lost, but because he was out of fellowship with God because of the sin, he needed to be restored to the joy of his salvation. Don't you understand? Can't you remember when you were out of fellowship with God and you were going on like everything was all right, but you did not experience the joy of the salvation until repentance was brought forth? David also goes on and says, then I will teach others or I will teach transgressors your ways. Teach transgressors your way and sinners shall be converted to you. Before his confession, David was not able to effectively teach those who were far from God. No more than we are able to be effective teachers if we are steeped in sin and pretending to be what we're not. Guilt makes one less likely to be as evangelistic as one should. Getting right with God is key in spiritual work. Convert, restore, send us to the ways of God. Restoration of praise, deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O oh God the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud your righteousness. Broken spirit and a contrite heart as opposite a stony heart, one that's insensitive to the burden of sin, stubborn and rebellious against God. But when we repent, when we have a broken spirit, and we will have full restoration when we're good in the kingdom of God, when we can recognize Zion, when we could recognize Judah, Jerusalem. Oh God, bless us now as we reflect on the great sacrifice that you made at Calvary, how you died on a Friday, how you hung your head in the locks of your shoulders, how you said it's finished, how you served the Lord your God. And then, of course, you made it possible for reconciliation. Oh, praise this holy name. Yes, he died. But didn't he get up? Yes, yes, yes. He got up with all power in his hand. Oh, praise this holy name. You trust in the Lord, I will trust in the Lord, I will trust in the Lord, till I die. The door to church is open. My letter of Christian experience, Canis for baptism.